Okay, so we're going to have a look at the monogramming tool today. And I'm actually in the creator level because people with the creator level of the software have this tool. It works exactly the same as the tool in Designer Plus. Um, however, Designer Plus have a few more options um, which I will cover as I go through. So where do we find the monogramming tool? It's in the lettering monogramming toolbox. So if we expand that out, in Designer Plus you will also see the um, other option here for saving your um, lettering to keyboard shortcuts. So, uh, but Creator Level have got lettering and monogramming. So all you do is left click on monogramming and over in the docker area the monogramming docker will open for you. There's no drawing pin there, it's either open or shut so you can just shut it when you don't need it anymore by clicking on the cross. Um, you can hide or show the color film if you find you're running out of space here you can leave the color film hidden for the time being by clicking on the drawing pin it'll dock over here when you want to bring it back just hover over the tab and click on your drawing pin and it will come back okay so what have we got by default over here by default the designs tab will be open and you'll have a whole lot of template designs that make making a monogram really quick and easy if you're in a hurry so you've got a, a slider bar here so you've got lots of monograms in different shaped frames and with different arrays of lettering and then you've got just lettering without a frame in between somewhere here might be at the top yes the top one actually has um, design elements in the in the frames as well now you don't have to look at all of these at once they have them in um, smaller folders so if you only want to look at monograms that have a border with ornaments you can click on that one and this will then become a shorter scroll just to see all the options with borders and and ornaments or likewise just borders only only the ones with just borders will show and the simple ones have just the lettering so these are a good place to start if you haven't got any motivation for what you want to do with your monogram so you can edit any of these so even if you choose one that hasn't got a border if you want to add a border later on you can likewise with your ornaments you don't have to start with one of the inbuilt templates either. You can start from scratch and just work your way through the tabs up here to create your own design, your own um, monogram arrangement. So let's go through the tabs. Well, let's let's pick one and I'll just demonstrate editing an existing one to start with. So let's just pick this first one. Now it'll come in in the colors that are shown here. The monogram is a bit like an applique in that it's all tied together. If I click on any one of the objects, they will all select. If I right click, I can't ungroup. It's kind of um, just joined together as one monogram object. So because of that, if you want to change colors, you have to hold down your Alt key and then you can select the individual elements in the design. So I can select just the lettering if I've got my Alt key held down. Okay and then I can just choose the color I want to make that so if I want to make that orange I can make that orange then I can choose the ornaments by holding down my alt key select the ornament both ornaments will select and I can make those maybe purple and let's make the border purple to match that too so hold down my alt key select the border and change that to purple or magenta or whatever color that's called so that's how you change the color but if you want to change the arrangement 
of what's in here and the border, then you need to come to the other tabs here. So obviously most people won't have a surname starting with the letter B and a first name starting with the letter A and a second name starting with the letter C. So we need to go to the letters tab. So just click on the letters tab. For some reason it won't let me click on that, so I'm going to click off. I'm going to select the whole thing again and then click on the letters tab and it worked that time. So um, might might have been something to do with me having my alt key held down earlier. But here we can just change our letters and you don't have to use letters. You can actually type a name. So I'm just going to put my name in there. It's entirely up to you. It will change on the fly. Now it looks a bit funny because the A is far too big for the name even though it's lowercase and that's because the style of lettering I had chosen was the first option where the first letter is smaller than the second letter and then the last letter is smaller again so that's what's happening here smaller but it was a, an uppercase C so it looks a bit bigger um, then my A was made large and then the ROL were made small so I need to go and find one that is all the same size so option number four if I click on that now all my letters are the same size. Okay, so I've changed the letters and I've changed the colors. I can change the font. So I can choose any of the inbuilt fonts or even a true type font. And for those of you who have um, Designer Plus, you will also have your keyboard shortcut fonts as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as it is, but you could change the font if you so desired. You can change the height of the font. And you also have um, a properties, object properties option here. So you can click on that and that will bring your normal lettering dialog open. It will allow you to use these different baselines. Um, you can set your italic. Uh, I don't know how much, how well, much these are worth applying um, because they take quite a bit of controlling and for a small monogram it's maybe not that useful but it's up to you you can um, auto kern you can letter space change the letter spacing you can make it italic you can change the width of the letters so you can do all the normal things the justification that you do with lettering but it will do it inside the monogram here okay Quite often, just what comes with the default, it looks the nicest. So by all means, play around, but um, so you can see what are what is possible. But uh, you'll probably find that the default, the, um, not necessarily the font default, but the options, uh, the properties defaults are probably the best. Um, okay, so you've got all sorts of arrangements here for your lettering. Okay, and then um, you can even select a character here if you didn't want to have, um, if you just wanted some one of the characters from the different fonts, you could select it here. Or if you needed a letter with a, an accent or whatever, you can get it there that you can't type with your keyboard. Okay, so I'll just click off. I'll cancel that, sorry. Um... Now, do we want those ornaments there or not? So we can go to the ornaments. Again, our current monogram is selected, so it will show the ornament here that is on that particular monogram. So I've got the option of adding another ornament, or deleting the ornament, or changing the ornament. So if I wanted to change it to a different ornament, I would drop down this menu and I can change it to another ornament pattern which should open this in your um, software. Now if you've got Designer Plus you and you've created your own patterns they may show up here in the drop down menu um, so you could create your own ornaments and save them if you've got Designer Plus so that you can use them but Creator Levels probably only got the monogram ornaments option of the inbuilt ornaments so let's have a look at some of those there's some quite interesting ones here um, and some lovely swirls and things so 
I'm just looking for something that I might like to use. Let's use, well, there's some nice Christmas holly ones when it gets closer to Christmas. Uh, there's a lot to choose from, actually. I'm just trying to find something I like. Let's change it to this one. So if I pull this aside, you can see this one's different. So if I click on this one and go OK, it will change to that one. Now, I'm not sure I like the way they are up. So you've got all sorts of other options here. I do like them top and bottom, so I'm going to stick with that. But you've got all sorts of options for placement here. And this is a... There are other options if you keep clicking on the arrows of where you want the placements of those monograms. And these indicate that they're going to be mirrored. So that side's dark and that side's light. So, and oh, it's the opposite on this side. So they are going to be mirrored. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways they are mirrored. So just have a look at that. Um, down here you can actually manually put your positions wherever you like. So they don't have to be stay the same as what you chose up here. You can start um, adding more ornaments. You can change the size of the ornament. So you can change the width and the height independently if you unlock it, or you can change it proportionately. Um, you can rotate the ornament and you can mirror the ornaments. Now I actually, it actually goes on from the what they call the anchor ornament. So the anchor ornament is the one with the red box around it. So if I want this one mirrored, it will mirror the others as well. Um, the anchor, whatever you do to the anchor ornament will affect all the others. So um, if you can't find what you want in your mirror options up here or your replacement options up here, then you can come down here and, and play around a bit more. So I am going to change this to mirror it the other way. So now I like that arrangement better. Okay. So that's under advanced and that's a pop-out menu. So you need to open that up usually um, and by clicking on this little black arrow. Your next option is borders. So we chose this arrangement when we first chose our um, monogram style at the beginning from the designs tab. So you would probably be pretty sure you wanted that, but you can change that if you like. So if I left click on here, all your border shapes will come here that are inbuilt with the software. Now there's a section called borders and then there's another one called diamond borders. So you can choose any of those. Let's choose this one and go OK. Now you can have that as a border which can be satin or any other of your um, outline stitches that you have available. So again, Designer Plus will have more outline stitches available. Um, but um, let's go... Well, let's not do that yet. What I want to do is put a, a, a lacy fill behind here. Um, so the borders go in the order that you digitize them. So if we've got this border number one as an outline, and then we put, and that's got a, a six millimeter offset from the from the lettering, so from here to here is six millimeters, and likewise over here. Then um, if I do a lacy fill, it's going to sit on top of that, and I actually want it to be underneath this border. So I'm going to. Well, I've got that border shape chosen. I'm going to change it to a fill type. So you've got outline type or fill type. Change it to a fill type and change it to a pattern fill. And I'll just go with the stock standard pattern fill that comes with it. My ornaments now look a bit wishy-washy against that. But um, if I change, hold down my Alt key and change this. I think I've got that selected. Change that to a paler colour. Won't be so bad. Let's change it to this really pale cream. So that's a really pale cream. So you could actually, you know, do that on a, on a 
um, pile fabric or something like that and that will hold the pile down away from the lettering and, and ornaments and for those of you in designer plus you could make that feel a cross stitch or a lacework stitch which would hold would be even more denser to hold down your pile of your of your toweling or whatever underneath but if you want that to show then maybe not have ornaments or choose a different ornament that stands out more so they're just things to consider but I've now got my fill there of my ornament I will make it a little bit darker so you know it's there there we go all right so um now I want that satin border so I am going to add another border so I'll click off so nothing's selected and then click on the monogram in here so the whole monogram is selected now my first border is showing again and now I've got the option to add a border so I click on add and it's added but it's put a two millimeter offset I want it to actually sit on top of the edge of that fill because that looks a bit ugly there where the travel on edges comes along so I'm actually going to change that to zero and you need to enter to make that take effect just zoom out it's not actually working enter oh it's gone back to two let's make it zero and enter that's better and now it's actually covered the edge which looks really pretty so you could add more borders so I could add another one and I could make that offset about six enter so you can have a border outside a border outside a border you can create some really pretty things and with your borders you've got your offset as I said you've got your whether you're whether it's a an outline type or a fill type so in your outline types you could make it a blanket stitch if you wanted to you could make it any of those um, types of outlines it actually says we can do a fancy which is actually a pattern fill on it so that's interesting um, okay I'm going to undo that we can undo and I might even delete that so I don't want that outer border anymore so I'll just delete that it's selected in blue so hit the delete button and it's gone all right now I have got the satin stitch border selected so if I go to the properties for that it will bring up my satin stitch width and spacing and so forth and this is where you could also change it to any of your um, uh, different outline stitches okay right so that's how you edit and play around with an ex a basic design and you've start that you started off with now if you wanted to um, say you spent a lot of time creating the exact border and fill or whatever you wanted and you wanted to save that so that you could just in the future just call it up and change the name or change the lettering that is possible so if we go to designs we have got custom and if we look if we hover over it it tells us that the custom designs will be listed in Benina Embroidery 9 in my case but it could be 8 uh, oh no it can't be 8 8 have version 8 hasn't got this option so um, in your I've got some here where I've saved custom monograms um, would you believe so um, <laughs> they will be listed here but if we hover over that it says Benina version 9 monogram template designs slash custom so that's where we need to save it to so let's save this one just to, just to see the process so we're going to go file save as and we're going to go to you can go to libraries um, embroidery and then come to your Benina 9 embroidery Benina 8 haven't got this option sorry um, 
and then if you scroll down you will see monogram template designs so you can double click on that to open it up and then there's a custom folder so you can double click on that and these are the four designs I've already got here and I'm saving this one so I will it's called design 2 we won't worry about have I got a design 2 there already no good so I can save that so now that one appears there as well so that's how you save a custom and then you can um, when you're um, wanting to create a new one with a different name but the same arrangement then you can uh, let's just say this one wasn't here so I'll select this one and delete it and so I would come in and I'll just close that as well I would come in choose my monogramming and then I would make sure I clicked on custom and I would be able to find it click on it it opens up and then I can just go to the letters tab and change the name to Sue for instance there we go so it's a really quick way especially if you've got something that you want to use for um, a club or a group or some sort where you might get new members and you need to make them a name tag or something this is really helpful okay well that's a quick overview of the monogramming tool there are still some more features I've got to cover like you can actually create your own border shapes to, so you're not just reliant on the borders that come with the um, software you can make your own shapes for that and save those ready for reuse over and over again so and you can I believe create your own ornaments I've got to check on that so if you want to put different ornaments in there um, that you want to use over and over again so I will make another video about that coming up soon and in the meantime happy digitizing if you like this video please like it please subscribe if you're not subscribed so you don't miss out and turn on your notifications Also, if you need to contact me, you can message me through, you can either comment below or you can message me through my Facebook page. I'll put a link below and I'll also put a link below to my Creative Fabrica page, which I have some designs available, and my Tidy Cow page where you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Thank you very much.